T minus five seconds here. All right. Hey, Daniel. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Thank you for having me on today. No, thank you. I I think you were like you've you've watched this stream before. So how does it feel to be on the other side? Feels um, pretty cool. Yeah, I've definitely checked out this stream a handful of times and seen some of your posts on YouTube and actually learned quite a bit from them. So it, it feels nice to be on the other side of this, and hopefully I can can tribute back to the community um, just as much as you have. So um, yeah, feels great. Yeah, well, welcome. You are the first uh, first viewer turned guest. <laughs> so that's exciting. It's uh, an honor. Uh, <laughs> um, maybe we'll start just with a quick intro. So, uh, you know, tell folks who you are, where we're, where, you know, I think it's quite obvious where you work, but give us a little intro and uh, then I'll kind of introduce what we're talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my name is Daniel. I am currently a product support specialist at Parabola. Uh, my background is primarily in e-commerce. So um, I've worked for directed consumer brands, um, really using Shopify and kind of figuring out ways to automate Shopify. Um, and I've also been kind of a uh, enthusiast in the low code community as well too, um, and even some no code platforms as well. Um, so kind of when I found that Parabola was a tool that could kind of take the spreadsheet format and um, use that to update Shopify. It really became the center of my digital workflow, I would say. So um, yeah, specializing in e-commerce and hopefully we can build out a few flows and a, a few tips and tricks um, that might help uh, similar users um, update and, and um, improve their Shopify workflows. So I, you know, from I, I've spoken to a lot of folks at Parabola and it seems like one of the rules of, of joining the company is to first build cool stuff in parabola and then and then show it off as like you should hire me does that does, <laughs> would you recommend that path to folks is that how you get into parabola i guess i guess that's one way to do it um and there's definitely a few stories of people for me um being users of the product and really kind of falling in love with it and then quickly becoming an employee of um, the company and that was actually my experience as well too so um I had actually come across Parabola um, with one of your streams previously. I think it was um, updating a Webflow CMS using Google Analytics. Right. Um, so that Famous. was really, that was, yeah, that was my introduction into Parabola. And then um, after that, I kind of realized that I can use it um, to kind of make API requests. So I ended up building a tool that would automatically refund um, orders in Shopify, uh, we would receive like a big spreadsheet from our uh, logistics partner. And I used to have to go one by one, you know, copy and paste the order number, match up the line item. And that would sometimes take me uh, hours, especially after like the holiday season or um, bigger product launches. And so kind of using Parabola and getting to, you know, see how I can import data, how I can transform data and ultimately send it to Shopify, um, that really sped up that workflow uh, quite a bit. So it was, I was able to build the flow successfully and then I was um, bulk refunding orders, hundreds of orders at a time. Um, and what took, a, a, what used to take two hours now took a mere few minutes. So that was like a, that was a big deal for me. Yeah. So um, you can have two things I take away from that is like, I'm excited. I, I'm, you know, I'm not a very big Shopify user, but I do kind of can see why it's so manual, right? You're kind of just import. It's not a system where you're managing other than e-commerce and e-commerce has so much around it. The second more selfish thing that I figure out is maybe I should add like a referral link to roles at Parabola, right? And be like, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm giving pipeline your way. So if there's anyone in the chat from Parabola, know that I, I, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be adding some referral links uh, uh, and then tracking and then using Parabola potentially to track the amount of people I'm referring uh, to Parabola. But uh, yeah, really excited. It means a lot that you know uh, my video was in some way useful for you, kind of saving time, and that's ultimately what we're here for. Um, yeah. So today, I think you know what I, what I want to kind of do with you is show me how that flow works. So we're be importing information out of 
Shopify. I think for folks who don't use Shopify, it doesn't matter. I think you'll understand like how Parabola works. And we'll send it to Airtable because this is this is my channel and, and we send things to Airtable here. Not because we need to, not because we have to, but because we want to, right? Um, and again, it, it doesn't matter if like Shopify is your end place, right? Uh, you know, the goal is just to kind of show how you're pulling information out, doing things with that information and then sending it somewhere else. It just so happens that our input for today is going to be uh, Shopify and our output is going to be Airtable, uh, but really you can you can do whatever. So you can take the middle and apply it to your use case. Um, so with that, Daniel, ready to go? Let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. Let's um, let's cool. dive into a new flow and see what we can build. Okay, cool. So this is the part where it, it doesn't go Ari, but this can be weird for a moment. So I'm going to share my screen here with you, Daniel. Awesome. So you should see everything. There we go. I'm going to put you in a good position. There we go. So folks should now see Daniel and myself. I'm just going to clean up my desktop here. And Daniel, we're in our Airtable base. Uh, uh. Oh, cool. We've awesome. got someone from Shopify. Hey, Ryan. Uh, uh. That's really cool. That's that's a little stressful. So let us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's exciting. So I'm in the Airtable base. We've done, you know, what is Parabola? We've done the intros. I think we can check that off. So I think I, I think a good question, you know, to you, Daniel, is is why would we sync Airtable and Parabola? And more generally, you know, why did Parabola build a connector to Shopify? Yeah, so I think on a high level use case, um, thinking about Shopify and Parabola, it kind of just takes a lot of the interface of Shopify and which may be a little bit harder to parse through kind of order by order or clicking into specific things. Yeah, like for example, um, if you wanted to go ahead and click into that uh, specific order, then you would get a list of all the line items associated with an order. It's actually a really nice interface to work with, but maybe you kind of want to reference all of that information in a spreadsheet um, kind of table. I think actually a lot of our e-commerce users, and I know with my experience personally, um, I was doing a lot of exports out of Shopify. I was doing a lot of imports into Shopify using their native like CSV bulk uploader and um, exporter. So I think that this is a good way for us to remove one step of importing and exporting and just kind of drop drag that information directly into uh, Parabola. I think kind of just more um, speaking about like exporting things into Airtable, we can think about um, just backing up certain data in Shopify. So maybe we wanted to uh, back up a list of all of our orders that we had in Shopify, and maybe we want to track the fulfillment status of that. That's something that we can do um, in sync between Shopify and Airtable. And every time that that status would change, um, that would be automatically updated in uh, Airtable. And that could be used again, like um, to track customer experience. Maybe if something is fulfilled, then we can reach out to a customer um, for a certain, you know, uh, maybe we want to check how their order was doing or if there was right. any maybe like gifting or follow up that we could do. So that was like a, that's a good uh, use case as well. And I think also if you wanted to do something along the lines of maybe looking at some of your products or kind of like your daily sales and seeing how many products that you um, sold a certain day, kind of get a, getting a good sense of um, what some of your most popular products are, that would be another use case as well too. So I kind of like just use this as a way to A, like backup and sync order information. And then also, again, we can uh, pass along this data to maybe another third party um, so that they can kind of look at your Shopify information without needing um, direct access your story. Right. So, you know, when I was kind of doing the research for this, when, when I look at Shopify, it's actually a relational database, right? So you've got your customers who buy things, which are orders. Those orders are composed of line items. Those line items are essentially things in your CMS that can be purchased, right? So when you think of like the back end of Shopify, it's actually a relational database. Uh, or, you know, not, not, <laughs> maybe it's not a relational database, but it can be seen or, or interpreted as a relational database. And there's a bunch of workflows that can stem from that, right? So maybe you want to sync your contact list with, uh, you know, a CRM somewhere else, right? So maybe your business is not just e-commerce. 
and it has another component and a CRM is something different. Maybe that CRM is Airtable, maybe it's not. And you wanna be able to say, this person bought these items. Uh, you know, I kind of think of it as like, maybe you work at Disney and think people buy things, but they also go and buy tickets online and maybe in a different system. And you wanna have a central place to say, you know, this person bought this on Shopify, but also went to these eight other things. Um, so Airtable just happens to be a good place to store relational information. But again, can really be anything. So our goal for today, Daniel, is if I'm understanding this right, is essentially just gonna take these orders, right? And orders in Shopify, if I understand them, are like I bought some I bought a cart and you know that order has six things in it. Right. So this one's got six times black and white wristwatches. Right. So our goal is gonna be to be like, okay, well every X, every minute, every 10 minutes, every 20 minutes go ahead and you know put those orders into my Airtable base. And if we have time, go ahead and kind of um, associate items to those orders, right? And we're just gonna be tracking quantity, but then we could imagine have customers as well. So we better understand what customers buy what items. Uh, we can track you know pretty much anything. Is that understanding kind of what we're gonna do here today, Daniel? Yeah, uh, for the most part, like I said, I'm just kind of reiterating, we're going to go ahead and sync, sync those orders to um, Airtable. And then I kind of also want to see if we have time to demonstrate how we might be able to kind of, um, if an order, if a, if a field in an order is updated, specifically like the fulfillment status, um, we can go ahead and update that within Shopify and resync that information to Airtable, um, as well as kind of uh, maybe create another relational database in which we list our specific line items um, and as you can kind of see, for those of you that are familiar with Airtable, we have like a column um, that's called the order name. And that's kind of a, uh, making a relationship between the line items for each order and um, the order that uh, they're linked to. So yeah, that's kind of a good view to look at it right there as well too. And kind of uh, going off what you were saying as well too, um, not only can we take um, information from Shopify and kind of export that, maybe compose an email list, but we can also take, uh, we can import data from other places as well too right. and um, import that into Shopify as well too. So um, a cool. whole bunch of use cases here. Yeah, okay, cool, let's kick this off. So I'd love to know in the chat, you know, so it seems like we've got a few folks Ryan, probably you know, quite familiar with Shopify, seems like Colleen's used it as well. I'd love to know, like, are you familiar with Parabola? Is this your first uh, interaction with Parabola? So let me know in the chat if that's the case. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna kind of jump right into Parabola. Um, so maybe Daniel, a good place to start for those who are unfamiliar with Parabola, which I, which I imagine is most people joining us today. Can you talk a little bit about you know, where, what I'm looking at, you know, how does this work? Uh, uh, and, and then we're going to start building our workflow. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of the way that I look at this um, is what I would call the canvas, and it's broken up into two sections. The actual builder section on this left-hand side, that's where we're going to go ahead and drag and drop different steps to either import data, transform data, and then ultimately export that data. And right. then kind of on the right hand side, we have all of our um, steps and integrations that are linked to those different types of imports, transforms and exports. Um, if we go ahead and actually use that search bar at the top, we can kind of take a look at our first step that we would use, which is going to be a uh, pull from Shopify. And if we go ahead and select that and just drag that onto the canvas, now we have our first step in which we can import data into Shopify. So you should have to, um, if you go ahead and click into that, and then you're gonna to need to authorize your Shopify account. And I believe the account is called uh, Parabola Developer Store. And then with uh, dashes in between each. Oh no, I actually, my my uh, my keyboard is broken. It's very, very embarrassing <laughs> that I have to, uh, I have to use a dash symbol. So this is actually like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it after this, I promise. Uh, <laughs> This is what happens. There we go. Developer 1P, another embarrassing part. I yeah. think that's 1P. There we go. I think I think so. And then awesome. Cool. Awesome. And so, so this is kind of what we look at um, 
kind of the left hand side of this is going to be our settings configuration. So if we look at this view, we can see, you know, show me all of the orders with the line items default uh, detail, include the default columns, et cetera, et cetera. And then kind of on this right hand side where it says zero rows and 50 columns, uh, that's going to be where the data is actually imported. And we'll kind of go ahead and import some data and we'll see it looks uh, very similar to a um, spreadsheet. So if we go yeah. ahead and, um, and this is a this is a demo store that we're using right now. But maybe if we go and change the the date in which orders um, are imported. So if you scroll down, you'll see where order process okay. date is. Yeah. So maybe let's do like six months. Um, there's not that many orders in the store, but I think that that's probably a good place to start. There we go. So and let's then, try that. All right. Awesome. So this is, again, just kind of a list. And most people are going to be familiar with a, a, a setup like this. We can kind of see that there's different headers, like the order name, the order ID, um, the date it was processed at, some of the emails, line items, uh, IDs, et cetera. And um, for those of you that are familiar with Shopify's API, this is more or less returning a, a JSON body, but in a spreadsheet format. Mm -hmm. But we can kind of scroll, scroll through um, all the way to the right just kind of see the different types of data as it returns. Um, yeah. So, so actually, yeah, I just want to, I want to, what's interesting in this, like, I just like looking at this, what's interesting is that we're going to kind of go after order to or, order name, right? At, like the order is what we're pushing to um, Airtable, but like very easily from the flow we're going to create today, you can see like vendor, that might be a really good table. Right, and you already have that information, and it's at the order level, so you can start tying like which vendor is part of which order. That feels more like something you would add at a line item, right? Because mm -hmm. an order can have multiple different vendors, but every line item would have one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what type of fulfillment? So there's like a bunch of information just by making this available. I can kind of start imagining all the the kind of things you could potentially workflows build out of this. But our goal, if I'm understanding Daniel, is just to be like, okay, take the order. It seems like we have multiple orders. We're probably gonna have to like filter this down and then just send new orders to Airtable. Yeah, so I think it, there's definitely like a whole bunch of use cases. And I think when we go ahead and look at how the data is structured, there's gonna be certain types of data that um, are, are more helpful to some users and certain types of data that is uh, more helpful to other users. But I think in this example, it's best to kind of just look at a, a few type of um, columns. That way we can just focus in on them and then work on some of the transforms that we can ultimately use cool. to maybe format that data and ultimately send to Airtable. Okay, so, so what you're saying is we're gonna kind of whittle down the columns here so we don't have so many exactly exactly and just so it's, map it's easier here. exactly just so cool. it's easier to parse um so what we can go ahead and do is if we go ahead and search the steps on the right hand side there should be a step called select columns awesome and go ahead and yep and drag that and you'll notice there's a drop target so if you go ahead and add that step within the circle drop target it'll automatically um, make a connection between the two so the default um, columns that you can see that it's keeping are gonna be called the order name and the order ID. Those are the first two columns, um, but we can go ahead and keep a few more columns um, by searching yeah, in that Fulfillment. Yeah, yeah, fulfillment. So fulfillment status. And then uh, that will, so that's actually the line items fulfillment status. Let's take a look at oh, the okay. order fulfillment. Yep. Uh, so yeah, fulfill, I just, whoops. I'm messing it all up, man. Fulfillment. <laughs> <laughs> Fulfill. Full. Full. This is, yeah, there we go. You never realize how, how hard it is to write the word fulfillment until you have to do it in front yeah. of people live. Uh, <laughs> you can also search by order. Like if you just search order and then it'll give all the um, kind of properties that are searched. Yeah. Order. Okay, and there we go. Fulfillment. There. Boom. Perfect. And then uh, let's also just take a look at the process that, uh, um, so order processed app, which is right there. That's the second drop down oh, from the top. Wow. Boom. And then perfect. We can go ahead and click out. And then if we go ahead and. So I just, just want to make sure we're mapping essentially whatever we want to keep in our error table, like our table, that's what we're kind of keeping as columns because then we're going to kind of write to Airtable. Yes. Table. So so our Airtable database and kind of our, um, call, our, our spreadsheet um, in Parabola should be pretty similar. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and, and like I said, um, just look, focus on these three yeah. columns just so it's easier to, to read. But we can also, if you look at the top left, um, you'll see it says columns to keep. 
if you yeah. go ahead and click oh, okay. that in columns to remove, that'll um, do the exact opposite. So it'll keep all of the columns and remove those specific columns. So I think cool. this is just like a good way. Um, and a lot of Parabola is just filtering and transforming that data while we're building our flows. Um, so once we... Oh. Yeah, I'm just kind of thinking like, okay, so the next step feels like right now, if I look at these select columns, we've got like three of the same because we're having one, if I go into this, right, our orders are composed of multiple line items. So if we look at like 1100, that one should have six, right? Uh, oh no, because so it's six times one. So we only bought one item. So how does it know wh how many rows there is for each order? So every different line item that is uh, added, so each unique line item should have its own specific row. So if you look at like 1099, for example, and you scroll to like the um, like the line item's name, so right. you can see there's an anchor bracelet for men that's soft, there's one that's called steel, and there's one that's plastic. Since each of those are different variants, that would return uh, order three. 1099 three times, yes. Okay, but so I if I ordered... Two of the same variant within an order, yes. it's only going to return one line item. Exactly. So, and okay. there's going to be a, a line items quantity that would say something like two or however many that you got it. Uh, specifically order. Okay. Um, so in this case, again, we're just going to look at the orders. We don't want to worry about the line items just yet. Um, but what I've, I'll, I'll like to do is just to kind of make it cleaner and have less rows to work with, I'll do a remove duplicate row step. So if you, yep, there it is right there. Uh, and what you can do is uh, go ahead and select, yeah, okay. Select the unique value in each column. So the order name column, and then what you wanna do is uh, actually, would you mind um, unplugging that input and replugging it back in again? Sorry. No, that's fine. How do I, to boom? Yeah, so so yeah, let's delete that step and, and get it in again. Like that, there we go. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And if you go ahead and click on input one down at the bottom, uh, if you see it all the way down at the bottom, yeah, right there. So it is getting an, an input uh, in these columns, order name. So see if, yeah, you can change that to like two per second or like change the... Rut row. Mm -mm. Okay, so it's working here. <laughs> okay, and if you try changing that back to one really quickly, seeing hopefully, fingers crossed. So this is the... This is the, you know, okay. <laughs> blow into the, the machine and see if it, if it works, which, you know, it's kind of fun because usually on this stream, I make mistakes, but this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I still, I still am essentially responsible, but, uh, okay. Now we, it feels yes. like we have one, we we've created, like we've checked unicity. And so now exactly. we're always keeping the last, um, you know, the last iteration of that order within. Yeah. Exactly. And so, and, and then kind of looking at the fulfillment status, it's, to my knowledge, um, an order's fulfillment status changes when every single line item, um, that specific order colon fulfillment status changes right. only when every single line item has been uh, fulfilled. And we can go ahead and like manually mark that in um, Shopify as well too. Right. Um, so let's go ahead and just now that we have um, one row per order, uh, the next thing I like to do just to clean up the data a little bit more is... Um, I'll go ahead and, and use a find and replace step. Yep. And so what I typically like to do here is if um, the order fulfillment status is blank, um, what I'll go ahead and do is just actually add it as unfulfilled. It's just a personal thing that I like to do just because when we're exporting data into Airtable, we can go ahead and see that it's actually um, an unfulfilled. So yeah, you can keep that. So note that you could do this in Airtable by creating like a formula field, but mm -hmm. I do agree with you, like it's cleaner to do it here within like your business logic. So, okay, now now what it's gonna do is just go ahead and, and kind of find unfulfilled. Exactly. Did I write that exactly. right? Unfulfilled, unfulfilled, I think so. Uh, <laughs> looks, good. looks good to me, looks good to me. 
um, but yeah, so more or less, this is this is just something, some just basic data cleaning that I like to do, and it's just visually easier to parse. Um, and then sometimes too, like if there's any blank cells um, in a right. column, we want to make sure that that there's an actual like value being passed versus um, like a null value. Um, so I like to kind of do that just to make sure that um, again that value can be passed. So at this point, we can kind of we have like a basic understanding of what our orders are. Um, the date that the order was placed and the actual fulfillment status of these orders. Um, so what we can kind of do now is we can go and maybe export this to our Airtable database. Um, so right now, if we use the um, send to an API step, I believe. Yes. Awesome. I think this is the point where I, I understand more. This is the Airtable <laughs> part, right? Yeah, um, so, so so this is basically what we're going to do here. We're, we just want to initially sync up some basic data and get it into Airtable. And um, we can kind of use a send to an API step to kind of tr uh, sync that data up. And kind of like you were talking about earlier, um, not only can we export to you know integrations like Airtable, but anything that has an API, um, specifically like a RESTful API, um, we can go ahead and export that data too, um, as long as you kind of have authorization and your basic like endpoint. Um, but I think it's pretty uh, straightforward um, in terms of syncing up to the uh, Airtable's API and, and using their database. So I'll kind of let you, if you want to go ahead yeah. and, and sync that up. Um, I'm curious, so depending on like how much time we want to spend here, I'm curious, yeah. you know in the chat, you know, are, is writing to Airtable's API or to, Air to APIs generally, is that something you're familiar with? Uh, so happy to like spend a little more time or a little less time here. Ryan, I'm sure you are very familiar with APIs, uh, but to everybody else, uh, let me know. And then again, if I'm going like too quickly over the API part, uh, let me know. And, and just yeah. for Airtable specifically, every single base has this API documentation uh, th at the base level. So if you're ever like, oh, I don't really know how this works, it actually has like calls that you can copy paste. Uh, so let's say we go into uh, our orders table and we want to create records, right? And we want to um, create one record at a time, right? There we go. So now essentially we're going to say like, okay, um, the one, one single object, there we go. Um, here's the API call you need to make. Right. This one has multiple records we're creating at once. Um, we're going to do one at a time. And so essentially, we're kind of just writing to this table to say, hey, create a record with these fields in it. And these fields are going to come from that, I guess, sheet or kind of step in parabola. Right. So it's going to come from the the sheet that lives in parabola for the moment. Um, does that make sense, Daniel? Am I explaining that right? Would you explain yeah. that differently? Yeah, so so basically like kind of the way that I like to think about it is we're gonna use an endpoint URL and that's just more or less a URL that directs where we wanna send this data to. In this specific example, it's going to be our orders table in Air um, in Airtable. And then kind of looking at some of these fields that say like order name and order process stat, we can go ahead and kind of match those values up to what we currently have in Parabola. So, so the great thing about Parabola is that we can actually uh, pass dynamic values and create multiple records with um, one sent to an API export step. So yeah. kind of, um, if you need me to send like a, like an example body, I'd be happy to do so. No, 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 I'm happy to build it live. I think that's the value, oh, right? So okay. essentially here, we have one yeah. here, right? So like I can copy paste this, right? This is an yeah, example exactly, of a exactly, call. Exactly. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste this right here, and now we're just gonna change. So if I go to input one, and I'll do the authentication in just a moment here. Mm -hmm. So essentially, mm -hmm. we're saying, okay, when you go ahead and create that record, mm -hmm. you know, here are the values for the fields, and then in the order name, instead of inputting a value, we're gonna input the column name from here. So I'm gonna say, okay, here, go and get order. I always remember how sensitive this thing is. <laughs> uh, so you got to like write one character and then let it autocomplete. So here we're saying same thing, go to order process at, right? Exactly. And then fulfillment status, 
uh, here it's that's the value we're going to change this to order um oh i forgot the the squiggly brackets were yeah. whatever mustache mustache <laughs> uh order fulfillment status and items two we're not sending right now so we can actually yeah, remove yeah, that yeah. and now we've just so when you do a send to api in parabola what i'm understanding is that it's going to for each row in your imaginary sheet in, sh in Parabola, be like, okay, let's create a record. Let's put the order name. Let's put the order process that. Let's put the fulfillment status and go ahead and create those in Airtable. So I got to do some authentication here. So I'm going to hide my screen for just a moment. Uh, there we go. So I've, I have really bad news for you, Daniel. I, no one could hear you just explain that because I was hiding my screen and I don't have your, your mic. <laughs> so now folks can hear you again. So I've, I've added my API key. So essentially, what I'm just going to re-say what Daniel said, not to tell, <laughs> force him to say it again. Uh, and I'm going to learn that I have to add his mic on uh, the, the hiding screen, which, which is, you know, two people is new to me on the stream. Um, so I've, I've, I've added my, so essentially we're going to create a row in Airtable for every row that we have in Parabola. So I'm gonna let's. I think this is a good time to test it. Do you yeah, know, absolutely. Like, let's let's make sure this works. Okay, but in because we don't have this live, it's not gonna run. We actually have to uh, yeah. run. So you want to actually yeah. So if you go ahead and click Run Flow uh, in the upper right hand corner, that's actually going to um, set the state of your flow from an, like an editor state to an a published state. Um, and hopefully if this all works correctly, we'll see those um, tables being updated um, or those, those rows being updated in Airtable. And then also something that we can look at maybe a little bit later on or depending on how much time we have is that we can set scheduling rules with Parabola. So we can uh, tell this flow to specifically run at a set interval of maybe every hour we post new orders or every day or once a week, so on and so forth. Okay, so, what you'll kind so of sorry, sorry, sorry. There's a question from Ryan around you know, Shopify should build a send to Shopify for Parabola. I think there is a send to Shopify. Is that is that correct? So you can, we are, we're pulling from Shopify, but you have a direct connector to send to Shopify as well, right? That's, yes, that's correct. So that's like a, a way that we can kind of take data. Maybe if you have a CSV file of products that your team has, mm -hmm. and it kind of has basic things like, oh, here's the name of the title. Um, here's like the price. Any field that exists in Shopify that you can update when making a product, we can essentially upload a CSV file or some type of spreadsheet, and then use our send to Shopify step to map those specific column headers uh, to, to bulk create products, right. um, which is a really um, useful feature. Cool. Okay. So, so we've written, so our API call worked. We've got, you know, 16 new records in Airtable and those map back to the 16 kind of orders we have uh, right here. Right. So we should have 16 yeah. rows and now, but the, the challenge I'm seeing and, you know, let's act like this wasn't prepared or whatever, but we have duplicates, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we have an issue where, you know, right now, every time I run this, it's not checking for existing things in Airtable. So I think that feels like a natural next step where we're going to check, we're going to import Airtable if I'm understanding this right. And then, you know, take check. There's going to be like a check moment, like a logic moment that says, you know, is this in order that exists already? If so, uh, update the status. And if that's not the case, uh, go ahead and add a new record. Exactly. So um, in kind of setting up that logic flow, we don't want to, um, and maybe in this example, we kind of have some duplicates just because when we were testing this, but if we want to, you know, post new orders to a database, um, every time we run that Shopify flow, it may re-import those same orders. So um, kind of by importing the uh, Airtable database and kind of setting up a little logic check, we can see if the um, order already exists in Airtable. Um, we don't want to um, re-import that again. Or maybe if there's a specific change, we can um, patch that specific order. So this just kind of um, 
is a safeguard to ensure that we're not duplicating records and orders and, and so on. Um, so okay. if you want to go ahead back back to your builder and, and do a pull from Airtable step. Uh, so this is a native integration that we have, um, which makes it really easy to get that information. Um, okay, going to go back into hiding. I'm sorry, Daniel, folks will not hear you for a second. I will have this fixed for the next stream, I promise. Uh, I need, there we go. Uh, boom. Daniel is back. All right, base ID, we get that from... Boom, boom, base ID right here in the URL, the ID of this space, boom, table name, orders, show updated results. So now we have, so I, I can actually speak to this because I, I understand these a little bit. So we've got our ID, which is the record ID some metadata when we created it, and then the values in the different fields for every record, right? Uh, so order process that, order fulfillment, those are what we're creating when there's an order in uh, Shopify order name and items as linked records. Uh, we might touch linked records, I think a little later if we have time and if folks are patient and having fun in the chat, uh, we may touch linked records. But for now, let's just kind of uh, avoid this. So we've got our information and you mentioned that now we need to check whether what we've just pulled from Shopify for each single order, is it a new order or is it an existing order? So how do we go about doing that? Exactly. So um, if we go back to our steps on the right hand side, there's a step that's called find overlap and go ahead. Oh, that's and new. That. Um, it may be newer. It's been it's been around for at least as long as I've known it to be around. But really? they definitely made up. They've made updates to the step. It used to be called, I think, list contains. Um, you have to you have to speak at the we. You are now. <laughs> you're not it's the we uh, uh, you were not we, have, <laughs> we updated it to um find overlap but basically what we can do is we can uh, check the values in one table so specifically our air table table right and we can also uh, check the data and the values from our shopify import and we can see if there's any um, existing overlap so we can show so, if oh, sorry let me just sorry i'm gonna cut, i'm sorry to cut you off but essentially now we're not going to send to api for every record for every row so I can actually, can I unlink this somehow? No, I probably can't. Yeah, uh, you can actually go ahead and uh, you can unlink that if you want to, because we're, we're not using, that's just gonna kind of get some initial orders into the database because we need data in our database in order for it to be imported properly um, from So Airtable. how do I unlink? Do I so just... You can just? Yeah, you can just um, either delete that step specifically, yeah. or you can just uh, take the arrow oh, okay. where it says, Boom. yeah. No, it doesn't give it to me. Can I? remove the so, oh there we go oh, yeah, there yeah, we go. yeah that's just me okay cool so we'll leave this floating because we don't want to do that again so now yeah. we essentially want to find overlap between you know every order we have in air table and every order we're pulling from shopify exactly so if you want to go ahead and kind of click into that step the find overlap step we can go ahead and see um what the configuration settings on the left hand side look like so we're basically uh taking our two inputs. So the first input is going to be our air table input. And then our second input is going to be our find and replace step, which is ultimately kind of, um, that was the final step that we had before, um, or that contained all of our Shopify data. And so we can kind of set some logic using these sentences um, up here. So basically, uh, rows match if any of the following conditions are true. So what we want to go ahead and do is look for values um, in the order name column. So so this is going to take the order name column from our Airtable database, and we right, want to because that's the first one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then we want to also look at the order name from our Shopify column, and then what we want to go ahead and do is um, select like do not match. So basically, oh, okay, because you're saying if they do not match, yes, the output of this is what we want to send to Airtable, which we already have as a destination with that API call. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so if you go ahead and show updated results, all right, oh, no. this is perfect. Nope, that's good because that's we not have perfect. This, if if we don't have any uh, 
all the orders should be in our Airtable database. No, because we I think we have less. So we only have six in... Oh, okay. So are there orders in Shopify that are not... So are there order in Airtable that are not in Shopify? This is what we just did. Yeah, so I think if we go ahead to Shopify and just kind of create a fake order, which we can pretty easily, uh, pretty much easily do, it should show up in this row. So okay. Uh, so actually, let me let me let me do this. Uh, okay, Leah, let's do that. How do we do that? So I think let's you go, go to scroll up go to ahead. the top, maybe uh, just to the top of this page. And I think if you go to more actions, there's like a duplicate uh, or like click into a specific order, anyone that we want to duplicate. And then I think if you select more actions at the top, there should be a duplicate button. Awesome. And then I think this just saves it as a draft. And if we scroll all the way down, uh, save draft order. And right. So if we go to save orders. It. Hopefully. Uh, do we have to like set it as a real order? We have, I don't see D24 here. You know, uh, go actually, if you go to drafts, so under uh, orders drafts, and then, yeah, I think we might have to mark it as paid. So if we go ahead and click into that specific draft and scroll down a little bit to the payment. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, so it's mark as paid. Except, yeah, mark as paid. And then we Boom. create the order. I think that should, if I'm not mistaken, Okay, okay we so have, now we, we have, have uh, an order 1101. So if we go ahead and reload yeah, that Shopify step and go ahead and re-import that, or reload that rather. So we've got 1101. Uh, 1101 has just showed up and hopefully... Uh, uh, I got to refresh between, I guess. No, it should... 11... It sh yeah, we don't have a 1101 here. Let's give it another, we've got 1101 here. We've got 1101. Can you actually then, go to, so uh, just try refreshing from the, the top most. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So we're saying pull from error table that match values and order name do not match. So this is our, uh, so I think we've got it mixed up here. Okay, so if we so want to go wanna, ahead. So if we want to create, my understanding is that if we want to create new Shopify orders, we want to start with, uh, we want to kind of inverse these two, right? Um, am so, I wrong about that? Go ahead. Let's go ahead and, and find out. So if we go ahead and switch the inputs and we can kind of um, show rows from, uh, pull from Airtable. So at the way yeah. top, yeah, right there. Find and replace and then uh, yeah, let's try that. There we go. So we're saying that that match, and we want do not match. So this is going to give us 1101 and all of those that I had previously deleted. So these are all the new orders. So we're essentially saying, okay, if, if, uh, if you've got, imagine like a Shopify orders here, and you've got your Airtable ones here, and you merge them together, we're saying those that don't merge that are not in Airtable are our new records in Airtable. Does that make sense? Yeah, so and what we can kind of go ahead and do is if that order, since those orders, um, is this, if it's a new order specifically, now we can go ahead and resend that to the API step. Did, did cool. you delete those orders from the actual Airtable yeah, database? Okay, I, did. I didn't, I didn't, that's I didn't my fault. see that's that. That's my fault. So <laughs> I, we have I was... here, I deleted the other eight. So we got the okay. new one that we just built, right? 1101. And then we also got all the ones prior. Um, so, you know, the overlap, I think it's like the join, right? You used, so before I would combine tables and then just filter out those that do not combine, those that do not merge. Find overlap is an easier way to do that. So kudos to your team for building that and we thank you. <laughs> uh, so let's run this. I think we can run it and what we'll now have is an up-to-date, uh, um, you know, kind of uh, all of our Shopify orders will be up-to-date, mm -hmm. right? So let's update. Yep. And then we want to run flow now. 
So this should essentially create only rows that do not yet exist in Airtable. That was a good time to say hi in the chat while we're waiting. Oh, that was quicker than I thought. Okay. So if I go here, okay, we've got our new orders right here. So let me order these. Um, they're ordered by creation date. And now we've got all of our orders, right? Yeah. So we've Would got- Would you actually mind oh, showing me a little bit about how to like filter some of the stuff? So I'm, I'm not yeah. super familiar with Airtable, but maybe just like a brief overview of some sorting and some filtering would be uh, helpful. So let's say we want to order by the name, right? Mm -hmm. And let's give this the, to back. And then we want to group it by fulfilled. So now we can have kind of our unfulfilled. So let's let's say we want to, let me create a new view actually. Let's keep, this is our main view, all orders. We're grouping them by fulfilled. Let's make this a little smaller, right? And then we have our partially fulfilled and unfulfilled. So let's say we want to create a new view that is un, so not fulfilled, right? So those are kind of orders that we're not worried about. Let's let's focus in on the orders that we do care about. We can filter. So a view is just a set specified way of looking at our information. So here we're saying only show me records where status is any of, right? Uh, partial unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. And then I can group that again. And right, you could imagine being like, okay, maybe we only want to keep certain types of orders, those that are VIP clients or whatever, and we can filter that in Parabola, bring it into Airtable and have our kind of our our flow happen in Airtable. So I can potentially be like, okay, move this into fulfilled. Uh, and let's say last thing, let's duplicate kind of last thing, let's do a Kanban view, which is orders by status and order this by the fulfillment status, right? So then you can start managing your kind of queue of orders. Uh, maybe these are, you know, tickets f around specific orders, right? So you can have your tickets and then manage your tickets out of Airtable, but all of your information around those orders and those items happen in uh, uh, Shopify. So that might be a reason why you're syncing. Um, you know, personally for me, uh, Airtable, you know, I'm, uh, Airtable is my hammer, and so everything is a nail. Uh, <laughs> so there's kind of no limit to uh, what you can do here. Yeah, for, for me, I think why I kind of like Parabola specifically is just because it has that spreadsheet um, interface a little bit, which is, mm -hmm. is more comfortable with me. And I know that Airtable has it as well too, but I think just being able to kind of see the, the, the data being transformed and kind of using a lot of similar functions that I might within a Google Sheet or an Excel um, file, yeah. um, that's really helpful. Well and it seems like just be careful not. if you if you tell anyone uh that Airtable is a spreadsheet people people are unhappy <laughs> Airtable is not a spreadsheet uh, not not uh, my uh, words not my words <laughs> cool okay so so now we now are importing all so now we have that first right so we have that first of like okay if it's new so we can actually note that let's go back here and say like this part this whole part is new new orders, right? So I can add yeah. a note. How do you add notes here? I, I think if you just right click, um, it oh, should okay. just say add a note, and then you can go ahead and add a note to your canvas and write a little reminder for yourself. Okay, and so what if an existing order has an update? That feels like a next step, right? So let's say someone is like, okay, we wanna, you know, this has been fulfilled that information is not gonna be captured here because it's gonna be filtered out. So what we can kind of go ahead and do is now use another um, find overlap step and we can kind of make some comparisons uh, on our Airtable database and then again um, to our Shopify. So we'll basically re-import, like we'll see if the Shopify, anything that was imported from Shopify has been updated um, and we can kind of match that on a new column. So like previously we're um, looking at the order name column. Uh, here we can maybe look at the fulfillment status as if, if that has changed at all. Okay, so we're actually gonna do these two steps again. There's no way to like, we're gonna have to you, you, recreate you can, the flow. 
you can actually just so like taking the like the find and replace step which is kind of um your like yeah. master shopify export you can just drag that and then also uh your air table database um like you can just kind of oh okay yeah so i can just go here re- exactly exactly so i can just do this exactly okay so we're essentially saying like okay this one new orders and then I'm I'm really trying to be a better documenter. Actually, but you I could rename this, right? So I can actually rename this and say, you know, uh, find new orders. I don't need yeah. a note. Whoops. Just forget these notes. These are. Uh, there we go. No, deleting the wrong thing. <laughs> Let's move this out of the way. I'm scared of touch. Oh, there we go. Okay, delete. There we go. Here it's find existing orders. Boom. Okay. So note that this one's two and one, right? So I, sh- I guess I should, I should match the same. Yeah, and I believe I believe if you just switch the inputs within the actual settings configuration, oh, okay. I'm not one hundred percent sure on that, but I believe if you go ahead and do that, um, it should. Let's do that. Okay, now it looks good. We've got two for find and replace, one, and we're saying, so show rows from pull from Airtable that match rows in find and replace. So those are existing, right? So, so we're saying, yeah. yeah. So we can, again, we can match this on the order, uh, the name, same thing right here. And then show So we should, it should give us everything now because we just saved. Ex- ex- exactly. And oh, then we haven't, go- we haven't updated. One sec, one sec, we got to refresh this. Cause now we have new, we just, we ran it once. So now we have all of those records Let's come here. Let's refresh now. Now we have full overlap because we yeah. have just imported. So like I would maybe like rename this step something like order exists in Airtable or something along the lines that we know that this is like kind of the full record right. um, of what the orders are. And then we can kind of, once we get that done, we can kind of actually go ahead and use the um, combined table step again to see if we can uh, Maybe so what are we signal. what are we trying to do, right? So like I have why can't I just write this to Airtable? So basically, if you were gonna write that to Airtable again, that would just duplicate the orders um, in a specific right. like those those records would now like you would have um, you know duplicates of order number eleven one one zero zero or one zero nine nine. This is what we're trying to do is now we're just trying to find. Um, orders that have an updated fulfillment status. So basically the fulfillment status right. in Shopify is different from what okay. has been synced to Airtable. We're gonna now go ahead and patch in that new fulfillment status. Okay, so let me just, let me, okay. <laughs> I'm a little slow here today. It's been, a, it was a long evening last night. So essentially right now we have the fulfillment status in this you know, imaginary sheet, if you will, from Shopify. And we're gonna say, okay, well, Let's append, let's add this order's status from Airtable and check whether it matches, whether there's a new fulfillment status. If there is a new fulfillment status, let's go ahead and update that record in Airtable. Is that understanding like the next couple of steps here? Exactly, exactly. Cool. Okay, so combine. And, and, yeah, yeah combine. go ahead. Uh, and I was just going to kind of say like, we're right now we're focusing on kind of updating the order fulfillment status, but again, like we could think about, um, tracking status. Like for example, if you have a tracking number, um, and you need to update that into Shopify, and then you want to kind of send an email notification, uh, once the order has been marked as fulfilled, uh, that might be another interesting use case, but kind of the, the exercise here is just to see if we can update something that already exists, um, by changing one of the fields. So we're actually so- going to use, oh, sorry. Yeah, combined columns doesn't feel right. I feel like combined tables. Com- combined tables, exactly. That's the yeah. one that we want to use. And then what we want to do is take uh, the input from our find overlap step, which we did, and then go to the find and replace step. So, because okay. uh, that's going to be the master source of what the fulfillment status right, right, is. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. So let's rename this. You're right. We should call this like, Shopify orders. Yeah. That feels you know, much better. <laughs> a little bit more. Little Let's more bring this easier. down a little bit. There we go. Okay. That still feels not great, but whatever. Folks will figure it out. So sometimes uh, sometimes it does get a little bit um, yeah. like spaghetti twisty, but uh, at that point, um, so it, as long as it works, it, it, it it's good to go. Um, so our so primary yeah, we, table 
is the one that has all, it's the one from the previous step, which is find existing orders. And we're gonna wanna merge onto to get the Airtable status, is that right? That's correct. So um, I think find existing orders is the primary table. And then we wanna um, keep all rows. I like to keep all rows that have um, matches in all tables. So we can kind of go ahead and like select that drop down menu. And then this is gonna see like, uh, if we would go ahead and take a look at that. So can you click back into it really quickly the, that have matches in all tables? So uh, basically this is kind of like thinking about the structure of what our table is going to look like or our kind of spreadsheet up until this point. If we kind of keep all rows in the primary table and only matches from the other table. Um, we'll be keeping the structure of our um, findings, find existing orders table. Um, whereas this one will just, um, as long as kind of the orders ex is, exist in both tables, uh, that'll be a complete match. Right. And then. Uh, in all tables, we'll obviously keep everything from uh, both tables. So um, we can kind of add a, a few rules here. Um, and that's this is going to kind of be how we check to see um, if the order um, exists. So if we go ahead and, and go ahead and select uh, order name again, an order name. So, yep. There we go. Okay, so then, let me just, let me, let me read this back to you. Yeah. So... Our primary is find existing orders. That's yeah. coming from Shopify. And we're merging onto it Airtable. The exactly. fulfillment. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so what we're going to kind of do here is seeing uh, there should be, if we look at, scroll all the way to the right. Cool. So you'll see like the order fulfillment status, like one, and then there's another order fulfillment status. And if we wanted to, we could add another select column. Um, but right now, what you'll notice is that that fulfillment status in both of the order fulfillment status columns uh, will be matched. And if right. we were to go ahead and change that fulfillment status in Shopify, there's going to be a mismatch. And we're going to go ahead and use another step to kind of check to see if there is a mismatch. We could use a find overlap step, but I think um, an if else step works here. So I'll kind of give you a quick walkthrough um, of what that Yeah, okay. Like. So essentially now they all match. Exactly. Right? So we're going to say if they don't match, go ahead and, you know, update, do the API call. Yeah. Um, so this is just the rules for merging. So if I had multiple rules for merging, uh, let's say we're saying like order item has to match, an item type has to match, right? But this is not actually filtering down to the records I'm looking for, which are where the fulfillment status in Airtable, yeah. which is here, is different from the fulfillment status in Shopify, which is here. So I need to add a next step, which is you know, if. if yeah, if else step. So this is just going to basically like right now that step, the combining table step, is just getting the order fulfillment statuses from the from Shopify and Airtable, just getting them in the same uh, in the same kind of spreadsheet, and then we're going to use this if else step to go ahead and check to see uh, if there's a match or if there's a mismatch between the two, and then we can kind of use that to filter it down. Okay, so, so we're saying of, the rule create a new column called. Uh, and you can call it like, does it match or fulfillment status match or anything? Yep. Uh, okay, so we're saying we say if the order, the order fulfillment, fulfillment status is not equal to, uh, I like to do it, is not equal to, and then we can do kind of order fulfillment status colon one. Uh, or sorry, not colon, but parentheses one. So now we're, we're going to. Um, basically check to see if there's basically a mismatch between the two, then what we're going to do is we're going to put a value in, yeah, a mismatch or does not match or whatever. Um, otherwise, we're going to kind of, con if it is the same value, uh, that does match. So if you go ahead and click show updated results. Here we should have nothing. We should all have matches, right? So scroll okay. all the way down, cool. And what we can do in, in Shopify is uh, we can manually mark an order as fulfilled, and that should, um, so I think, yeah, if you see it says mark as fulfilled. But yeah, let's take this one, the last one. Yeah, let's do that. How Perfect. do I? Have that green button Mark as right fulfilled. There. Yep. Press the group, big green button. <laughs> uh, fulfill items, right? So click yeah, here. Yeah, fulfill six out of six items. Awesome. Fulfilled. Okay, so if we re-import. Yes. Let's pull back here. 
and we go to 10001 and we search for you order. can go to like the yeah the next step as well too because we filter oh right right, right yeah yeah so here zero zero one fulfilled in yes. Airtable we're seeing zero zero one as unfulfilled, unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. so if we follow kind of the lines here it's not a new order because it exists in Airtable so it's going to come down here it's going to merge together right so let's we don't need to find it it should be when we combine the tables, we should have it. And then here it should be the only value which is mismatch right here. Yep. Right. Exactly. So this should be eleven zero zero one. Right. Right here. So Boom. now that we, okay. Now that we can uh, we have that specific you know value as a mismatch, what we can do now is filter our rows to uh, search for that specific value. That way we can get a table um, of showing like updated orders. And we can ultimately use that to send to um, Airtable. So I think like, um, yeah, include the rows in. Uh, so we're saying, no, it's not order. We want to say mismatch or match. That's what we, does it match? Is equal to mismatch. Mis mismatch, yeah. Okay, so I really have to be better at naming columns because <laughs> you know, does it match equal to mismatch is just not, if you take anything away from here, hopefully it's not the way I name my columns. So, okay, we should have that one order here. Okay, boom. There we go. Boom. So now we can uh, take that specific information and similarly how we were posting that data um, to our Airtable base, now we can kind of use a send to an API step to ultimately um, patch in that specific uh, record. Okay, so this is where I shine. This is my moment <laughs> you've been doing. <laughs> okay, so. Now we want to update, you know, I feel like you're passing off the mic to me. Uh, so we're back in our API documentation. We want to go to the order tables. We want to update a record. The first thing you'll notice is that it's a patch call. And if you do live streams, note that this is the main mistake you're going to make is doing a post when you want to do a patch. Uh, so we want to uh, do a patch, which will update information. So patch, boom. The endpoint, this right here, right? But we want to update a single record, mm -hmm. right? So we want to actually put the record ID in the API call. That's mm -hmm. easier. So I'm just going to copy paste the whole thing. Luckily, I think we imported that uh, using the API import, the Airtable import step, that record ID should be um, a value yeah. that we can pass through. Yeah, right here. So we're just explaining that we have ID, which is the record ID from Airtable. Mm -hmm. So if I pass in the call, so what I'm saying here is, this is gonna run this update for every single row in this you know, quote unquote sheet. Yeah. And it's gonna go ahead and input the record ID so Airtable knows which record to update. And then in the body, very similarly, the only field we want to update is that uh, fulfillment mm -hmm. status, so order fulfillment status. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we gotta, I like to do is just still copy paste this JSON. Yep. Boom. And just like another helpful tip too, um, for yeah. those of you that are working with like JSON and APIs, sometimes I like to try to structure or I like to uh, try to structure my body first, first, so similar to like what you're doing and then work backwards and go ahead and fill in those values just so right. I know what the API is trying to um, receive and then I can kind of fill in um, whatever values I, I deem necessary. Yeah, so in this case, we just want to update the status so I can remove mm -hmm. everything except status. And here I'm essentially, okay, I don't want to input a value. What I want, let's go ahead and remove this, is I want order and I want this one right here, which is the, the one. Yes, with, I think it's, there, there it boom. is. Okay, so I'm going to put you on mute. I'm going to enter my API key again. <laughs> Sorry, moment. I wish I had like the Jeopardy kind of like, <laughs> doo, doo, like, like, like elevator music or whatever, but just a second here. Uh, We're back. 
We're back. Awesome. Okay. Now, the only person who knows my API key is Daniel. Uh, <laughs> so, um, okay, so if I if I show updated results, this is actually not going to work because it's not going to do the live post. Right. We're going to test it to make sure that it works properly. So no yeah. errors. Yeah, go ahead. Something else to just check, check really quickly too is um, we'll we'll need to publish it again, but maybe we'll, let's check that other send to an API step to ensure that like we're not going to be posting new orders um, right. to our table as well too. So hopefully, there. again, okay, that looks good. Just something to kind of note um, to avoid any type of duplications. So cool. once we've gone ahead and do that, we can go ahead and update the live version, um, run the flow, and hopefully that um, specific order fulfillment status will have changed. All right, need need so, Colleen. If you, I think you you're mentioning you said that Airtable was a spreadsheet. I mean, I think you've been to enough live streams that that's I can forgive that. Uh, it's okay to do it a few times initially. <laughs> but Airtable is not a spreadsheet. That's my brand. My brand is syncing Airtable to other things. And second is that Airtable is not a spreadsheet. Um, okay, so if that worked, coming here, if I go to oh, it's no longer in our unfulfilled. 1101, we see that it's in fulfilled. If we open that up, we made, we see that the order fulfillment status was just changed via API. So quick pro tip, if you're ever wondering, uh, you know, did it change? You can go into the record, go into the activity, and also note that who changes via API is related to the API key. Uh, so it knows that I was the one who kind of built this flow because it's using my API key. So we see that it's been updated. So now this flow is really cool because um, it, uh, whoops, where, where is, there we go. Okay. So it does, it updates for specific, um, for specific statuses. So it checks if there's a new order, if it's a new order, it adds it to Airtable and if it uh, uh, creates a new record. So let's, let's do two things now. Let's make sure that this works. We're going to make it live uh, and we're going to run it. And we're going to do two things. One, we're going to create a new order, and then we're going to update an existing order, uh, and then we're going to celebrate. Hopefully, if everything went right. <laughs> uh, 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 so, I'm going to update the live version. So I got to go here, go to orders, create an order, or I can just duplicate an existing one. That feels yeah. easier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, duplicate. Oops. No, yeah, I click that, into yeah, it. click into it. Mm -hmm. Duplicate. This is my first time in Shopify, so this is fun. And also Canadian company, cool. Uh, supporting my own. There we go. I can mark as paid. Mm -hmm. Create order. Okay, so now we should have a new order. 1102, which is unfulfilled. That's the one we just created. And let's go ahead and uh, move 1097 and then fulfill order somewhere here. It should be somewhere here. Uh, More act, uh, not too familiar with marking specific ones. We Can I just... Uh, like if you go to a fulfillment status that says um, unfulfilled, like unfulfilled, yeah, I know the I know the green buttons right there. So just boom, mark as fulfilled. Okay, so we now created a new order. We've we're fulfilling all of these. Yeah, so ten sixty six is going to have a, a patch request in which we update the fulfillment status, and then I think right. eleven o two is going to be a new order that we want to post to the base or to the table rather. How, how confident are you feeling about this? What's your confidence level? 100%. What? <laughs> I don't I'm know. clearly not seen enough of the streams to know that <laughs> you cannot, you cannot be a hundred percent. I think, I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Okay. Okay. So I actually have a, a pretty cool, let's actually go back just to make it easier to find which ones we can actually say, uh, you know, recent changes. And let's add a last modified time. We're gonna call this last modified time, all editable fields, right? And then we're gonna sort 
by last modified time. Right, so we see that run modify two records, right? That's that's just now. So this is like a good way to see like what what has just updated, right? Regardless of what status it's in. So here we're saying, okay, we've have the new order, which is unfulfilled, 1102, and we have our existing order, which has the right status. So I think that merits some some confetti. <laughs> uh, uh, we've done the flow. Uh, congratulations to you. Your confidence was was well was was deserved. But know that I don't think you could have 100% confidence. Next time we're gonna have to do something a little more complicated here, Daniel. If you're at 100% confidence. Uh, um, oh, yeah. So I actually that thought that was that was pretty cool. I think you know I know I know we had a goal of uh, um, adding in the linked records, right? Um, so. It's, it's actually relatively easy to do that. You do the exact same flow, right? But just with the items import. Exactly. Um, so we'll get, we'll I, go ahead and, oh, I don't I, know if you I, I would, I would, I would use it as a, as a, let's, let's add it as a link for folks, right? Cause I do think like, I don't want to, we've, we've, we're an hour in and I, <laughs> I appreciate everyone's patience. Um, I'm going to put it under the video, the link to the full flow with the linked records. And the reason is, is that it's, it's very similar to what we just did, except that when you're calling the Airtable API, uh, when you put the linked record, so if I go into items table fields, uh, create a record, right? There's an order name, which is a linked record. And all you have to do is put the name of the order right here and then put typecast equal true, which will go and find the order which with which the item is associated. So everything else is the same. And if you're watching this in the future or watching it right now and you're like, I have no idea what any of this means, uh, go to the bottom of the video uh, and there will be a link that you can copy paste the whole flow, right? So it'll have two more, it'll have another pull from Shopify, it'll have another pull from Airtable, and it's gonna do all of this kind of, uh, I was gonna say malarkey, but uh, all of this kind <laughs> of uh, 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 sausage making, and it's gonna have two more send to API, which just creates the line items. Now, finally, as like a, as a final note here, maybe you wanna out export customers, orders, tickets, whatever from Shopify, you wanna to send to Shopify. I know a lot of folks do uh, CMS in Airtable, and then wanna update their CMS in Shopify, you can do that as well. There's really, once you kind of know the input output stuff, uh, you can pretty much do anything. So as myself, I'm not a Shopify expert by no means. This was the first into uh, the, the foray into the dashboard. Um, and so, yeah, that was relatively easy. Uh, yeah. So yeah, any parting words here, Daniel, before, uh, uh, what would you like to let folks know before we sign off here? Well, I think I think you pretty much know that um, once you get an understanding of inputs and outputs and really just kind of structuring and kind of formatting your data within Parabola, you can take any type of data input and send it to any type of and use it as an output um, to any other like third party service. Um, it's just kind of a matter of using some of these transform tools. And once you kind of get familiar with that, you'll see how dynamic it can be, especially when using things like the curly braces and, and kind of really doing bulk um, updates right. and automations as opposed to maybe like a single event is triggered. Um, but yeah, I think I think that this was super um, informative on my end and, and, and hopefully some, for some of you users out there as well too. Um, and then if you if you ever have any like, questions or definitely like check out our community forum as well too. We're always kind of posting some show and tell features of other people who have built flows using Parabola. Um, and then also just feel free to reach out to our help team as well too and, and we can kind of get you set, uh, set up as well. Yeah, cool. And, and if anything, if anyone builds any cool stuff on uh, Parabola, you can tweet at me at AR, Aaron, A-R-O-N-K-O-R, Aaron Kaur. Uh, I'm always curious to see what folks are building. And if you build something cool, uh, I may have you on, on the stream. Uh, so with that, I'm going to do a quick, uh, quick make sure to follow on Twitch. Uh, that way you get notified when we're live. We're going to have uh, probably Mackenzie Child next week. Uh, and then Joe from FinSuite the following week. 
uh, might do some little Shopify, uh, Airtable, Webflow, uh, Parabola, uh, surprise streams until then. Uh, so with that, a huge thanks, uh, Joe. Joe's excited. Colleen's excited. Really appreciate all of you sticking around, joining. This was huge fun. And uh, yeah, really appreciate it. And Daniel, I'll let you maybe end on this. How does it feel on the other side of Automate All The Things? It feels great. It, I'm <laughs> so honored and excited to have been a part of this show. And I'll continue watching this uh, this live stream and then all the future yeah. live streams from here on out. Yeah, I mean, tr truly the honor is all mine. It's, uh, it's kind of cool, you know, the idea that, uh, you know, something I did for fun essentially led to you uh, not not led to, but I, I like the idea that, you know, you discovered something and then pers pursued it to the point where you're now a full-time employee there. So yeah. I don't I don't think I can draw a direct line between what I've done <laughs> and to, to that. I think there's a lot of credit that goes to you, rightfully so. But it is exciting that, um, you know, yeah, it means it, it means a lot to me that, that folks are discovering things and discovering new tools and, and making their lives easier through these types of live streams. And I appreciate you giving back and joining the live stream today. Yeah, it's, it's the least I can do. And again, thank you again for um, showing me Parabola and, and just for all <laughs> that you do for the community. It's it's truly um, it's truly wonderful. And, and hopefully like the community can continue to build upon itself um, using people like yourself and using tools like Parabola and Airtable. And, and so, yeah, I can't thank you enough. Cool. All right. So, so parting words is use me, use my content, <laughs> use Parabola, uh, use Daniel. So with that, huge thanks for everyone who joined. This was loads of fun. Uh, we're going to sign off here. And uh, yeah, I'll see everyone on Twitter. Bye, y'all. See you soon.